welcome everyone who is logged in tonight. Happy Friday, but more importantly, happy Women's History Month. It is uh, March, what, 27th? Uh, 26, that's 27 tomorrow. So um, we still have a couple of days left until we get to celebrate all of these amazing women. And tonight um, we are excited as the African-American women in cinema to celebrate a wonderful woman who you all see to your left or your right, Michelle Clementine. Um, so we are going to have a fun night tonight. Of course, if you have any questions, you can hit up our chat room and uh, leave them there. And as soon as we get to the question um, and answer portion, we will read those off, okay? Especially for Michelle, she cannot wait to answer all of your questions. <laughs> so Michelle, are you ready? I'm just gonna intro you to everybody in the room tonight. I'm ready, stay ready. All right, uh, let me just, I guess, uh, let everybody know who I am. <laughs> um, I am Roxy Digital. I am a syndicated Caribbean talk show host um, currently with Soundchat Radio Networks. We broadcast live on 93.5 FM in New York. It is the only Caribbean station in New York City. Prior to that, I was with Radio 103.9, 95.5 PLJ and um, worked at WBLS and WLIB. And um, I am also an adjunct professor at Iona College in New Rochelle. I am happy to be uh, to reconnect with Tara Renee of AAWIC, um, as I did work with her in the past at Radio 1039. And I am back this time virtually, this time all of us virtually. And I am excited to present to you tonight's event. So welcome everyone to the African American Women in Cinema Educational Series. Um, I'm your guest host, Roxy. And this series is presented by UFront Media. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight because you could be anywhere. Not really, because I think we're still shut down. Um, <laughs> but, uh, the AAWIC Educational Series will be taking place the last Friday of each month. And you can find details of the next series on www.aawic.org. Today, it is with great pleasure that I introduce you to Miss Michelle Clementine. Michelle Clementine is a 15 year veteran of uh, the camera department, a Bronx native. She earned her bachelor's of uh, arts in film production at Brooklyn College. In 2011, Michelle joined the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees Camera Union. Um, she's also a founding member of the newly formed mentorship committee for the International Cinematographers Guild and has helped usher in a new wave of diverse camera assistants. In addition to music videos and television commercials, Michelle has established her prowess behind the camera for some notable works. Uh, you may have heard such as a Spike Lee's Netflix original, She's Gotta Have It, and Barry Jenkins' If Beale Street Could Talk, uh, which received three Oscar nominations. Michelle will be giving a presentation and um, after I ask her a few questions, of course, and pry into her life. And then we'll open the floor to questions. Like I said, you can leave those questions in the chat room. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please help me welcome Michelle Clementine. <laughs> you know, if there was a stage, it totally feels like you set the stage with your voice oh, and oh. that intro. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> of course. No, thank you. Set off my Friday, girl. I got the wine. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I'm really happy to talk with everybody. And, um, you know, I served as a judge in a previous year uh, with Tara and, and Kimberly Thornton brought me in and I love her so much. And so it's nice to be here in this capacity, just hopefully sharing some knowledge and nuggets people can take with them and grow. Nice. So um, I am excited again to have you here and of course have lots to um, ask you because of course I'm curious and so is everybody else. Uh, I just gave this amazing intro about you, but I wanna know what made you choose your professional field? Oh, um, well, my dad and my cousin growing up were just avid photographers. And mm -hmm. my dad used to have a DSLR camera and my cousin used to have the little disposable where you kind of wind uh, the little gear and then right. process it afterwards. And they just took great photos. 
it, and it was just a hobby. And it was something that when I got to high school, um, they had a dark room photography class and I took the class. I did really well in it. My teachers, they loved my work. They sold it at auctions and stuff. And it kind of steered me in the direction. And so when I saw movie cameras for the first time, I was like, wow, what is that? So right. made my way towards it at that point. So, you know, a lot of people would say in any industry, really, but specifically this industry, it seems just, you know, just saying it, that it would be quite difficult to get into. So, you know, some people take the internship route, uh, shadowing mentorship route. How did you get into the field? Um, you know, did you know certain professionals? Did you have a hookup? Explain that, that journey well, for us. I, I kind of just... Uh got cool with my classmates at Brooklyn College and we were all part of our own sort of very small independent networks. And um, my friends in my sound class was like, hey, friend is shooting a music video this weekend and needs a PA. And I went on that job and I met some guys that were not in the union as well, but it was this really small music video, um, maybe a short film. I don't even remember. It was nothing big. And they were like, we'll pay you hundred dollars in cash at the end of the night. It was like that kind of thing. Very mm -hmm. small. Um, but from there, I, I, oh, Michelle, you're kind of going in and out some really good connections and met some people. Do I sound okay? A little bit delayed. It's going in and out as if it was just freezing, but we have you back now. Okay. So go on. My Wi-Fi is so spotty today. I don't know what's happening. But um, so it was like I, just being a nice person on set, I, even on a set that somebody would deem is... A, a bootleg or a broken or whatever type of set, like just really low budget. Um, I treated it with like seriousness and everybody that I met, I, I just treated with respect and kindness. And they liked me so much, they just started giving my name to other people. And I kind of made my way, I think a year after that onto um, the taking of Pelham 123. It was like this huge movie with Denzel and, you know, and they're blowing up cars and crashing them over bridges and stuff so it was I saw this camera I saw this this ingenue 12 to 1 that was like the biggest lens it's like three feet long and it looked like a hundred pounds and I was just like wow this is crazy this thing looks insane and then from there it just kind of it kind of went yeah can really I <laughs> the hip-hop honors were a couple years after that I was I was still a PA um I was a bad PA too, because once I saw the cameras, I would leave my lockup. I would harass the camera guys. Like I was just obsessed with the cameras, mm -hmm. um, you know, which isn't good for the ADs who were hiring me, <laughs> you know? Right. So, so but that you, was really it. I'm glad you brought that last part up because that kind of uh, segs me into the next question. How do you deal or overcome with challenges in, in general? you know, or in, especially in your fields, if there are any that you have experienced? Um, from my experience, um, this industry can be really intimidating, but it's kind of like a dog that barks a lot, but all it wants is attention, you know? Mm. So it's like, it's kind of like that, where it can, it can seem intimidating, it can seem uh, even scary at times. And there will be people who will try to be intimidating and try to be scary to make you run away. Um, but in those cases, I stood my ground um, and I let them know just as straightforward as possible, like I'm not going anywhere. Um, I had some guy named T-Bone, you know, like he called himself T-Bone. Uh, we were PAs together and the AD was just like, Hey, just go hang out, do whatever you want. We're not in for another like 
45 minutes. So you're early, take your time. And not even five minutes after he said that I run into this other guy and he was just like, you don't have your walkie on, you're unprofessional. You'll never mm -hmm. work in this town again. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him and I was just like, you're not even from here. Like you're not even from New York. You call your name, you call yourself T-Bone. Right. Who are you talking to? Right. You know, and I, I'm really bad. Like I don't really conceal my emotions. I'm really like sort of straightforward. So when I have questions, I ask them I'm like, who are you? You're not even from here. What makes you think you can say that to me? And I think when you give people back who are being confrontational, who are being aggressive, when you give them back that energy, but in the form of a question, when they have to actually answer, you know, it puts them in an awkward position. And I think that it, instead of me running away, turning it around on them, sort of had them tuck their tail in and run the other way instead. Ooh, yes. That's that New York-ish. And I'm glad that you brought that up because I wanted to get a little bit into your background. Yes, I mentioned you are a Bronx native in your, um, in your bio, but I want to know how that contributed to your strength and your power in this industry. Um, it totally, it totally propels me in every, in every room I step into because, um, you know, we're used to dealing with crazy people in New York and like all types mm. of characters, you know, people from all over the world. You don't know what can happen at any given moment. And so just being ready for whatever's next helps in an industry like this. Um, knowing to knowing to just speak up and be straight up about certain things like things that a lot of people in camera don't do is take accountability for whatever mistakes happen. Everybody wants to get credit for the good stuff that happens, but nobody takes the credit for whatever mistakes may have happened or whatever. And, and it's, it's pretty common to know people get thrown under the bus for mistakes that somebody else has made. Um, and I, I really, I, I'm really a person who's about accountability because I think it just makes things settle in a, in a better way and it, you can grow from your mistakes. You know, I, I really believe in that. And, and yeah, and I've taken accountability every time there were mistakes and that has gotten me far with people who respected that I was more solution-based as opposed to who can I blame or being insecure in that sense, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that those things definitely helped me. And I, I don't know where else I could have learned it <laughs> besides That's back right. home in the Bronx, you know? That's right. Bronx, uh -huh. stand up. We'll Hello. sit down, whatever you want to do. Um, <laughs> now, look, um, one last question before we open it up to the chat room, because there are um, questions for you sitting in the chat room. We are going to get right to you. Uh, what was your most valuable experience? My most valuable experience, um, you know, I can honestly say that when I worked on Beale Street, um, and I, I just tell this story because people don't realize the impact and the power of words. Um, I was pulling focus and, and the DP, um, James Laxton, he would tell us what he wanted to do in the shot. And then he would say, okay, um, now you guys can do whatever you want. And mm -hmm. so we were doing this scene where Kiki Lane was basically breaking the news that she's, uh, you know, pregnant in the movie. And she was really scared and nervous. And Regina King, even though she didn't have any lines, she just kept, she was still acting. She was still performing. Even when she wasn't in the foreground, even when she had no lines, she was just in the background and just giving so much face. And we did so many takes. And on the last take, I just rack focus to her. I just threw it to her. And Barry Jenkins was like, cut, 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 cut. He got out of his chair and he came directly to me. And he whispered in my ear, um, I feel differently about this scene because I feel like I saw it through the eyes of a woman. Mm. So 
I thank you. And I want you to know that you are a filmmaker. And ever since he said that, I was going through so much in my life at that time. But when he said that, it just broke something mentally and spiritually that was holding me back, I think. And it's sort of that moment accepting, like, I am a filmmaker, I am a creative, and I contribute to this process just as much as anybody else here. Um, it just it just did something to me that right. changed my life and career after that. Wow. Uh, everybody, let's give her a round of applause if we can using your reaction button. Um, Michelle, thank you so much. Um, of course, at this time, we're going to open the floor for uh, questions because there are some and I'm sure people want to um, find out more about you. And of course, uh, this industry that you so effortlessly represent. Uh, yeah. And we thank you for real. It's, it's Women's History Month and you are incredible and you are a filmmaker and you are so many things. So thank you for mm -hmm. um, exposing people that may not have known anything about cinematography to at least a tidbit of it tonight. So yeah. um, are you ready for the first question? Uh, sure. And I just put my IG down for everybody to, if you feel like you have any other questions that haven't been addressed here, to DM me and I, I'm pretty responsive with there. Okay, everybody check out your chat room. I actually like the name Cinnamon Time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you think you slick. All right. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I like it. I like it. No, I, I had to- actually suggested it to me too. No, it's a dope name. I, I had to like sound it out in my head before I said it so that I didn't sound crazy. Uh -huh. but, uh, <laughs> the first question of the night is what company does Michelle work with? I'm a freelancer. I work with every company. So yeah, I'm, I'm with Local 600, but I also do not union work. And as you know, I'm an independent contractor. And how did you just go to start about doing that? Like, um, is there like a freelancer union or like, do you get emails about opportunities? Well, you, you, you know how this, this, it's so cliche, but they're always talking about, it's all about who, you know, and it you is. know, your net, your network is your network, you know? Um, and so when you take the time, I, I tell people that trying to be in camera, really being a cinematographer is kind of like being a politician. You got to shake hands and kiss babies. You know, you got to in, put yourself out there, um, go to camera events, go to different uh, talks or classes or panels um, and really put yourself out there and be social. Wherever there's a camera event, go. Like one day I just, got up and went to Sundance. And I always thought I would go to Sundance if I had a film there. But then I was just like, why do I need to wait till I have a film at Sundance to go to Sundance? So I went and I was really nervous. I was like, I don't know, like I just called the few people I knew, the few networks I knew to get to parties and stuff. And I had the time of my life and I met so many people and it opened up LA to me and and meeting a lot of people out there that were from LA um, who started to know me as a camera operator from New York and then it helped with my transition when I came now to LA so another it's, perfect uh, another yeah, perfect yeah. transition I wanted to know how you went from New York to LA when did you make that decision uh, I just made the decision last week <laughs> to be here full time. I've been by coastal for the last two years. So Michelle, <laughs> yeah. did you say last week? Last Was Friday. Last... No way. <laughs> I'm so serious. No. I called up the union. I called up Yomada and I was just like, I'm ready. And she said, it's okay, let go of the chopped cheese in the Bronx. You're gonna come for sushi and sunshine. Not the chopped the cheese. So <laughs> Not the chopped cheese. Mm -hmm. She's from New York herself too. So she was totally like, she was having a ball. She was having a ball when I said, I'll, I'll move here. So, but yeah, I'm here full time now. And I just announced it last week, but I laid the foundation and laid the bricks down for the last two years and just extended myself and kind of was just, there's a lot of young women um, 
who are out here and who have been in the industry for a couple of years. And for me to be doing it for as long as I have been, um, it encourages young women to keep going. Right. Um, and so I definitely love the community of women that I've met out here who've been so supportive to me and I've been able to be supportive to them and it's been an equal amount of, of giving um, on all sides so that we're all sort of supporting and replenishing each other. So it's a really nice uh, community to be a part of, but you know, love, love, you know, black women, the way we love, you know, it's, it's, it's so warm and it's so soulful and it's so deep and it's so honest. And so to have that is nice to have the community of women um, that I've been able to really build around while I'm out here. You just gave me like that, you know, the short, the show Insecure. You mm -hmm. just gave me one of those moments. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know that, but that was like when you said, the way that women show you love it's the I see the same thing sometimes in my industry and it's I know what you mean exactly especially when you're getting the support you didn't think you were going to get and you get you got you get it um it's a beautiful yeah. thing so yeah. um which definitely aligns with you know women's history month and us supporting each other another question I wanted to go straight into which we are segging quite well is um you know what advice would you give the young women who want to become a cinematographer and what are the initial steps that should be taken? Um, definitely feel comfortable shooting more, whether it's on your phone or on a Polaroid or on whatever, just feel whatever camera you can get your hands on, whether it's photography or video, just get your hands on it and start feeling comfortable moving your way around a camera. And then from there, um, for me, what was important at the beginning of my career was establishing myself at a high level. So to me, joining Local 600 was a big deal. I joined a couple of years after graduating from college. Um, it takes a lot of people many, many years to do that. And the way I was able to do it in such a short, short time frame was that I was a prep tech at a rental house. So when you take the time to, you know, pay your dues by taking a low paying job for a year or two, but you're networking and you're getting to know the gear at the rental house, the camera packages, and, and you're able to network with the people who will hire you, you know? So I would definitely say that's a great start besides going to film school, besides having someone tell you just shoot more get involved and see what the big boys are doing. And to do that, you have to be at the union level. Um, and it's, it's really, really, it's hard, but it's so worth it. And you, and you are way ahead of the game. And you speak on unions. Um, could you describe what that union is? And also, can you recommend any schools? Um, I mean, any school that has a camera. I went to Brooklyn College. So, you know, you could go to the NYUs, you could go to the AFIs, you could go to these top tier schools and get your money's worth out of it just by the people you network with alone. Um, for me, I really just wanted the school of life to teach me more than a book could because whatever I was reading in Brooklyn College, didn't none of it made sense to me. Reading it in a book does not make sense. And you make all the mistakes by actually, you learn better by making all the mistakes, actually trying to do it. Right. So, so yeah, so I would definitely suggest just, just doing it, just going out there. And, and it doesn't have to be a school. It could be, it could be anything, but um, right. yeah. Get your friends together, put a little production on like, anything, anything that yeah, create, gets create, you create. in that mind. Yeah, create. Real quick question before we get to the last two questions. If you had to do it all over again, would you choose Brooklyn College? Or would you uh, have chosen somewhere else to go, gone out of state or something? Or a more specific school? 
No, I probably would have just skipped school and gone straight into all this because, you know, while school was great, it was really a time that I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And I was trying to figure it out. So school, I just treated it like practice, life practice, like, oh, I want to dibble and dabble on different topics. You know, I wanted to be, when I first went to school, I wanted to uh, major in politics. I used to I used to be an activist fighting for drug reform, you know, in New York. And I was working with Governor Pataki's office to change the Rockefeller drug laws. So I went to school wow. thinking I was going to be a politician. And by the time I, I was like, I, I hate politics, you know, and I was like, well, I, I like art. So let me do art history and be a curator. And I, I did internships like the, if I studied it in, in school, I did an internship for it to see the real world application for that. And so studying art history and then getting an internship as a art curator at a museum showed me, okay, I love the art world, but this is not exactly the, the, in the capacity I think I need to engage in it. Right. And then I did an internship at Tribeca Film Festivals and I was reading scripts all day and seeing short films and thinking like, wow, these people created this from scratch and I am fascinated at the mind that works like this. And I've been hooked ever since. And I was 21 years old at that point. So if I could have saved myself, I would have started at 18, you know, starting all that and, you know, really getting into it. So, but everything happens for a reason. I really don't have any regrets in that regard. Right. Now we have a special question from Daria. Uh, she says, hi, Michelle. As someone who has 26 years of experience as an entertainment publicist and celebrity entertainment journalist, where do mm. I begin to follow my other dream of becoming a director and cinematographer? I minored in film and theater with a bachelor's of arts in Afro-American studies from the University of Maryland at College Park. Mm hmm. Hmm. Thank you, Daria. Daria, I would suggest um, any filmmaker you know in your line of work, let them know what you wanna do. And more than anything, show them what you wanna do. So if you have anything that you've done in your spare time on your own, um, that shows somebody that you have the ability to shoot and direct, um, tell people that I'm, I'm honestly of the mind that closed mouth, they don't get fed. Yeah, so I tell people my aspirations. I tell people my dreams. I tell people my shortcomings because I want people to know that I'm making an effort and that I'm trying and that I'm reaching and that if they have any answers, if they're seeing something that I'm not, maybe they can share their wisdom with me and I'm really I really am of the mind that I respect my elders and I respect the people who came before me because if it wasn't for the women before me if it wasn't for the the people of color before me who knows where I would be in my life without the path that they laid you know um so I really respect that and so it's just it's just showing people the appreciation when you let them know hey this is what I want to do Let's do it together. And you will, you will be surprised with the things that people pop out and show you or, or share with you, you know? No, you're right. Absolutely right. Thank you for that. Thank you for the question, Daria. Thank you absolutely everybody um, who's attending, who's in the chat, motivating each other and Thanks sending each other positive messages, especially to Michelle Clementine. Again, use your reaction button to clap it up for her, send her um, cheers, because um, you are just really, really an amazing woman, Michelle. I like learning about you through these questions. And hell, I want to come to LA and make a, uh, uh, you know, Let's be as spontaneous together, as you and be like, hey, I'm moving here. Like, I Let's think that it. was inspiring <laughs> to me as well, because I've been trying to make it on that side of the world for about five to 10 years now. So for yeah. you to just get up and do that says a lot about you. You have, you know how to take leaps of faith. Um, oh Lord, this, and it doesn't mean that it's not scary. It's, de it's definitely right. scary. 
but it, it also means that I think that when you trust the universe, when you trust God, when you trust the spirit that you're moving in, um, you have to believe that the spirit will receive you just as much as it's pushing you. So you're right. Two more questions. Okay, Michelle, and then I promise yeah, we're done with course. you and you can, you can tell everybody where to not stalk you. Um, here's a question from Bonita. Uh, I do not have a degree, nor do I have any film schooling. I'm glad to hear that it works to just throw yourself into the craft. I am a short filmmaker and I am working on a project now that has received some funding. However, it's not a lot. I'm purchasing my own equipment. Do you have any tips for ways to create beautiful cell phone cinema? I invested in moment lenses. What tools would you suggest for a do-it-yourself uh, ER? Maybe get a gimbal for the phone. If you're gonna, if you, moment has some cute lenses and stuff, but I think that if you get a gimbal for that, it'll smooth out the shots. And don't be afraid to get up close and personal. A lot of people, when they, when they do their shoots with phones, they're used to holding their phones far away. But don't be afraid to go in for a tight shot. Don't be afraid to move. And also don't be afraid to keep the camera still. Because if you think about it, movies are a moving photograph. So sometimes think about the simplicity of a photograph and sometimes the power in it just staying still. So, right. you know, walk around your environment, walk around the set you know, look at it from the highest vantage point, look at it from the lowest and find a, a frame that's interesting to you and try to, your best to capture it in that exact way you see it in your eye. Glad we are talking about cameras because the very last question is, what is Michelle's favorite camera? Ah! <laughs> is that the stumper? It's not because my favorite camera that I think is the most perfect camera of all time is the 416. It's a 16 millimeter film camera. It's the, the build and the ergonomics on it is just perfect. And I think 16 millimeter has the perfect texture and coloring of any type of film. When it comes to digital cameras, I love the Alexa mini, um, but favorite camera of all time is definitely the 416 because it's it's just gorgeous it's a gorgeous camera hope y'all are writing this down because if not you will have to hit her up on her instagram to ask her again or she could put it in the chat we've got about two minutes 59 left we want to thank you again for tonight's um african-american women in cinema educational series with michelle clementine Yes. Um, we had a fabulous time. The questions, everybody uh, is literally um, just excited to have you here. And we want everybody to keep in contact with you or to see what you're up to next. So let them know where to find you. Oh my goodness. Find me again, find me on Instagram. I'm, I've just came from traveling all over the place, but I'm here in LA for some time and I'm really excited for it. And uh, yeah, if you hit me on my Instagram, I can give you, you know, my, uh, my email and all that other stuff as well, if it's a, a longer form letter. And um, I'm getting my website under construction. It's, I'm terrible. I'm the worst. No, you won't. I'm the worst, but it'll happen at some point. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course, of course. This is, has been our conclusion of this event. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. It's been wonderful. Again, Michelle, thank you. We look forward to seeing you all on April 30th at 7 p.m. Don't forget to visit www.aawic.org uh, for more details. And of course, we look forward to seeing all of you. In, in the meantime, please stay well and be safe. Thank, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Have Bye, a good ladies. one, Renee Bonita, Miss Kimberly Thornton, Daria, Kimberly. Karen Thomas, Miss Tara Renee. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, everyone.